Yep. That's that's good. I'm glad I redid it. It's it's different. It's it's it was subtle, super subtle, but now it's just nice and black and beautiful. Getting ready to do the bluing on the fittings, and I'm going over them with the buffer right now. Um, I started out with the wrong wheel on this pommel, and it kind of put some weird little scratches in the gold. So I'm just lightly going over it with some 3000 grit, clean those scratches out, and then use the proper wheel. So yeah, once I get all these pieces buffed up, I'm gonna put them in a uh, tank of chemical cleaner, get all the oils and everything off of them really well, and get them clean, and then we're gonna gum blow them. You want to get the best finish you can get on these fittings before you blue them because whatever scratches or anything you have on the fitting will be amplified after the bluing. It's really important to clean stuff. I'm Mr. Clean, back with you for another cleaning tip. Cut a bunch of pieces of wire to suspend the parts in the bluing uh, tank. And I'm just cleaning some of the excess oil off because this is just rebar tie wire and it is like covered in greasy, grimy, gunky oil. So I'm cleaning uh, cleaning some of the extra off because the whole part, the whole thing that makes bluing successful or non-successful is pretty much how clean your parts are and how much prep you did and, and if you did do everything in the right order uh, really makes or breaks the bluing process. If you have oils on your part, it'll not have an even finish. It'll have like weird rainbowy bright spots that looks absolutely horrible. Horrible trying to get bluing done right before a show and I've stayed up like all night long doing bluing because it didn't go right and I had to clean the bluing off, sand the parts again, and then uh, lightly buff them again. And I've done that like up to eight or nine times I think one time before I got the bluing to come out the way I wanted. But got the system down pretty good these days to where it goes almost perfectly the first time as long as you do all the proper steps and preparation. So I'm gonna start putting these parts, I don't have them all buffed yet, but I'm gonna start putting them in the, uh, in the chemical cleaner one by one as I'm buffing them. And then by the time I get them all in there, I'll be able to start putting the first parts into the bluing salts probably. The reason I don't buff until right before the bluing is because um, even if you put WD-40 or some better protective oil on there to protect the finish on the steel, it might get a little bit of oxidation. So I like to wait to do the final buffing until right before bluing. That way if there's any kind of weird oxidation from moisture in the atmosphere or anything, it'll be gone from the buffing and then I'll be going right into the, uh, the tank. Because if you get some weird oxidation on there, it can like I said earlier, the, the bluing magnifies stuff, so it could magnify it. I'm gonna start putting these parts in the cleaner. This is the chemical cleaner that Brownell sells uh, for their bluing setup. I don't know what it's comprised of. Heat it up to 180 degrees, and then keep your part in it for 15 to 30 minutes, kind of in that range, and it chemically cleans the parts. Coffee break. Something feels off with that. It's pretty good though. Buffing compound. I don't remember what it specializes in, but it seems to really leave a nice finish on the gold, and that's what I care about most right now. Dude, I need an actual buffer. Can't even get in here with a guard, let alone a blade. I've been wanting to try a 3500 RPM one too, and see if it leaves a better finish. I have a feeling they might, because it's spinning so fast, it might. It's my wheel. Hey, man, what's up? You're gonna ruin that. You're gonna ruin your knives. It's not gonna ruin it. Huh? It's not gonna ruin it. 
Did it burn? I'm not going to let it burn much. Get for having fun. <laughs> Still smoking. Earlier, Kyle referred to you as having one job to do. One job to do. <laughs> what, what is that job? Catch the shop on fire. <laughs> Whatever means I see fit. Did you know there's actually a lot of people on YouTube who like you? <laughs> you're, you're their favorite person. Oh, good. What do you have to say to your fans? Few they are. Uh, uh, don't catch the shop on fire. Have me over and I'll help you catch the shop on fire. We'll do it together. <laughs> my job today, my only job is to keep that from boiling over, which it boiled over, it boiled over twice. So, uh, I'm In attempts of catching the <laughs> shop on fire. I was sitting over here watching it, and I'm, I'm looking at the buffer, I'm thinking, it looked really cool with flames coming off of it, so. Oh. We made flames come off the buffing wheel. <laughs> In the meantime, this boiled over. An important tip to remember is that if you have a bigger item like this guard that you're gonna blue, and it has finished surfaces like on all sides of it, I'm gonna try to keep it from hitting the sides or the bottom of the tank. So I've been making these uh, these wire contraptions that should sit in there and then just kind of, the wire should rest against the side and keep this suspended out in the, uh, kind of out in the middle of the tank. That just helps helps it get a good flow of uh, stuff around it and everything. If, if you have like part of the guard or something touching the side of the tank, it might make a little weird discoloration or something. So that's why I'm gonna try to keep this suspended out in the middle. I get the right depth. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Like, perfect, actually. <laughs> like you said. So these first pieces have definitely been in here a good half hour or so. I'm gonna start putting them in one by one. Something you wanna do before you put them in the bluing solution is to rinse off the uh, chemical cleaner. Should also probably go wash my hands really good so I'm not getting any weird contamination in this stuff. All nut. Looks like it's working. Or if it's already done something on this piece. Yep. Wonder if it's done something on the pommel nut already. Uh, a little bit. A little gray. So in order for the bluing salts to work properly, they need to be right around the perfect temperature, which the perfect temperature is 292 to like 298, that range. So they need to be boiling in that range. To get them to boil at that temperature, you have to have just the right amount of salt to water ratio. And the water is continually evaporating out of this, so I like to, I like to get them boiling at about 280 degrees or so. And then as I'm going through the process, some of that water goes away and that temperature gets hotter and hotter and hotter. And normally by the time I'm done, it's up around 300 by the time I'm done doing the bluing. If you have too much bluing salts to water ratio, the temperature is gonna be really high. If the temperature gets really high, 
like up into the 315 range or so, it can actually kind of burn the salts and cause your parts to be brown instead of a nice jet black. And if it's too low of a temperature where it's boiling, it won't hurt the salts, but it won't do anything to your fittings either. They'll just stay just like you put them in there. They won't get black. Like I said, I like to undershoot it by like 10, 15 degrees, get it boiling there, and then by the time I put my parts in and everything, it's normally getting up close to 290. And it seems like they work from like 280 to, to 310 or so. They seem to work in that range pretty well. I mean, I think it looks good. It's kind of hard to tell until you've actually dried it off. Once you dry it off, you can really tell. You keep it in there longer though. It's time to be on guard. Don't fall off, please, guard. Guard going in. Guard boil. Guard boil. Need more water in this thing. It's already up to 300. Okay, I got it. Not now. You can't put water in it now. You can. You dribble some in. It'll lower the boiling temperature and stuff. It'll mess up that guard, possibly. You can put a little bit in. Like a quarter cup. It'll stop boiling immediately. So once these have been in here for 15 to 30 minutes or so, the next step is to take them out and put them in boiling water for at least at least a good five minutes. And what that does is that cleans off all the uh, the bluing salts, especially down inside the like tang slots and in the, in the little holes and everything. You don't want bluing salts left in there because over time they can slowly creep out, creep out of the little slots and holes and everything, and uh, start causing some really nasty rust to appear on the outside. You want to get all the blowing salts cleaned out of the inside of the parts really well. And that's what the blowing salt, or that's what the boiling water does. I'm getting the wash tank ready for post wash. We're going to put clean water in here. Like Kyle was saying, we're going to heat this up and boil it, a full rolling boil to clean the salts out of the parts that we're blowing right now. It's time to get some of these parts cleaning off in the boiling water. Oh, that's really hot fire on the sides. It's gonna bubble up a bunch probably. Oh. Hot water. So when they're dry, you can really see how the finish looks. Oh man, it's perfect. It's gonna bring a tear to my eye. That is beautiful. The other fittings came out perfect, but the guard, something about it, it just has this really, really faint cloudiness to it that I don't like. I think it didn't get clean enough. I think I probably should have scrubbed it down really good with a soapy sponge before I uh, put it in the chemical cleaner. So it almost looks like maybe there was some kind of residue or something on there that might have made it get this slight cloudiness to it. It's such a close call though. I had a really hard time deciding if I'm gonna redo it or not, but I've I decided I'm gonna go ahead and redo it and I want it to be perfect. It's close It's close enough now to where if you, when you put a little oil on it or something, it looks perfect. And it's always gonna have oil on it probably, so it's always gonna look perfect like it is, but I just wanna know that it's perfect, perfect under that oil too. I'm gonna strip the bluing with some uh, navel jelly rust dissolver. This will take the bluing off because if you try to sand the bluing off, it's actually a really thick layer and it would take a lot of sanding to get all the bluing off. So I'll use this to get the bluing off and then it'll be kind of gray when we're done. So I'll have to lightly go over it with the 3000 grit and sand the piece again and then buff it and then we'll go back through the bluing only this time I'm gonna wash it with some soapy water and then put it in a brand new fresh batch of the chemical cleaner and do everything else probably the same because I'm probably should have like some plastic gloves on when you use this by the way it's not too late to change my mind yet it takes a few sometimes it takes up to like a minute before it starts removing the bluing but once it breaks through the bluing and then it just spreads all over really quickly it's actually really cool to see oh there it goes check it out it's spreading all over I think I feel it melting my fingertips. Wow. 
that's cool. Whoa. This is how I get the French gray look on my engraving. You blue it and then you remove the bluing with this rust remover and then it gives a nice gray finish. It doesn't look good on a large surface, but on little engraving areas, it looks really cool. So that saves a whole bunch of sanding because it would take a lot of sanding to get all the bluing off. You think it's really bad for me to get on my hands every once in a while? Probably bad at that, but um, then your body, your kidneys will fix it, your liver. It says to wear rubber gloves when in use. So why can't you just get the 3000 grit hand sanding since it's already kind of finished now? The buffer won't take off this, uh, this kind of frosted gray look. It's a little too much for the buffer to take off. I mean, it would take it off, but I'd have to use some really aggressive wheels. I want to sand that frosted gray look off and then go back to the buffer. 2,000 years later. Time number two for the guard. Just got done bluing it, took it out of the boiling water, rinsed it off, have yet to find out if it's good or not. Gotta get it dried off really well first. I got a good feeling about it though. Yeah, that's that's good. I'm glad I redid it. It's it's different. It's it's it was subtle, super subtle, but now it's just nice and black and beautiful. There was a subtle cloudiness to it and a little tiny blotch on one side. It was worth it. It was worth it. Now it just looks great. It's about as good as I'm gonna get right there. And remember, the most important part of gun blowing is all in the prep work. Getting that prep work done, and then if you have a failure with it, don't be afraid to sand that bluing off and do it again. Do it again, do it again. And that's how I do my gun bluing, to get my black mirror finish on the fittings. In the next video, I'm gonna be sanding my blade to 1500 grit, and then I'm gonna be etching it, and we're gonna finally get to see the Damascus on this massive, double-edged, 16 inch buoy blade. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. Yeah, I was gonna say something else, I don't know. Add water. Uh, how even the bluing and stuff is, unless it's really bad. There's a fly in my coffee. That is gross.